Hello everyone, it's Laura here from the Clifton Suspension Bridge Visitor Centre and today what I'd like to do is talk to you about some of the new books that we've added to our online shop. Um, beginning of course with this one, the definitive guide to the Clifton Suspension Bridge written by Adrian Andrews and Mike Pascoe. And if you want to know anything at all about the Clifton Suspension Bridge, this is where I suggest you start. Uh, this book retails at four ninety five, and it contains a, a lot of interesting images and history about the bridge, beginning with the story of William Vick, the man who came up with the original idea for it, um, looking at some of the designs that were proposed for it, and then going through and talking about the history of Brunel's build and the problems that he experienced during that, uh, that traumatic 33 years. Um, right at the end, there are a few stories, whoops, a few stories here about how we uh, look after the bridge, including our maintenance program and how we um, swap out parts like for like. So a beautiful list, little history there and really uh, quite an interesting book to read at home, even if you can't come and visit us at the moment. Um, if you want something a little more substantial, um, here's a book written a little more recently again by Mike Pascoe um, and this is 150 years of the Clifton Suspension Bridge a Photographic History. Um, so here this has uh, more or less the same story inside it with a few additions. So there's a little bit more about the social history um, and the way that the bridge has um, obtained its iconic status. Um, there are much better images to illustrate uh, what was happening in Bristol and with the bridge at the time and it includes more information on the wildlife of the Avon Gorge which is a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest and what was happening elsewhere with other bridges and where the ideas behind um, the engineering for Clifton actually came from. So if you want something a little more in depth but slightly less um, a historic timeline um, then this is a lovely book for you. It's got some absolutely gorgeous pictures and you'll pick up a lot of stuff from this one that you won't have seen before if you've read the guidebook. Um, it's a little more expensive, that one retails at $14.99. Now if you live in Bristol and you're looking for interesting ways to take your daily exercise then the book that I'd probably recommend to you is this one, From Brist Brigstow to Bristol in 45 Bridges. Now, before the lockdown, this book was really flying off the shelves in the visitor centre. It's extremely popular and we have quite limited stock. Um, the premise of the book is based around something called the Konigsberg Bridge Problem, which you can read about right at the back here. Um, and it's, a, it's an old mathematical problem. If there are a certain number of bridges in a town, how can you plot a route which crosses each bridge only once without retracing any of your steps? Now, Bristol's got far more bridges than the seven which were originally included in this, in this uh, problem, uh, but the, the route has been worked out. You can see that up here in the front. There we go. Um, so if you're based relatively centrally, you can see you can actually cr do quite a large section of this route and cross quite a lot of the bridges on your daily walk or cycle. And the book's got loads of information about each bridge. It's got really lovely photographic illustrations taken by one of the authors, Jeff Lucas, who's a fabulous photographer. Um, and if you do complete the whole route, it doesn't matter how long it takes you, but once you've done it, um, you can apply for a little pin to say that you've completed the challenge. So it's rather lovely in that respect. Um, and this book costs £18 and is hardback. If you're a bridge fan in general, uh, here's a new book that came out just last year by Joseph Rogers, Britain's Greatest Bridges. Now, this is Joseph's own uh, greatest hits of Britain's Bridges. So there are a few which you might expect to see in here, your own personal favourites, which aren't necessarily represented. But there are some smaller and uh, less well-known bridges that are of particular interest that have been included. Um, as well as some of the big hitters, obviously the Clifton Suspension Bridges in here. Um, and each bridge has its own entry, lots of facts, photographs and information. So it's a lovely read for somebody who's a bit of a bridge nerd or who's into their sort of industrial engineering. Um, 
absolutely lovely book. I would definitely recommend it. Um, and that costs fourteen ninety nine. Again, here's another. This is Bridges by Richard Heyman. Um, it's a Shire publication, Shire Books. Um, if you're familiar with those, then you'll know that they're really easy to read. Um, they're quite digestible. They've got lots of photographs and lots of information in them. Um, and this is actually a basic history of Bridges. So it starts off um, quite early in time. Uh, here we go with the medieval period and it goes straight through until the modern age with lots and lots of examples of bridges and how they were developed, the technology behind them. Um, it's got lots of names and dates so it's a good introduction if you're looking to learn something about bridge engineering and it's a totally new subject to you. Um, so again I'd recommend this actually as, as being very good for younger readers because the text is very easy to digest and it comes in short sections so you can pick it up, read a book and put it down again and you won't feel as though you've, you've lost track of what's going on. Now if you've got a budding engineer in the family um, and you want something that helps you to understand the physics behind bridges and how they work, then How to Read Bridges is going to be the book for you. Um, this begins quite simply by explaining how you can how you can understand bridges just by looking at them, um, the types of materials that they're created from, and the different types of designs of bridges. Um, you know, there's there's four main types. We say bats, bridges, arts, suspension, and truss, um, and all of those are listed in here. Um, once you've got through this introductory section, which explains the types of bridges and the materials to you, um, you get into more information here about what bridges are used for, um, some of the people who are quite famous for building them, and then a case study section where um, examples are provided to you of different bridges. And you can see here we've got these lovely little technical illustrations. Uh, with dimensions and information on them, as well as some lovely um, engravings and drawings and photographs from both modern and historic sources. Um, so this is a essentially a sort of a bridge spotter's guide. So if you're interested in, uh, in, in what you've seen when you've been away on your holidays and you want to know a little bit more about them, then this is perhaps a great book where you can kind of find that information out and understand a little bit more about what you've seen. And that is priced at 10.99. Now then, if Brunel is more of your bag, then uh, let's start off with Chris Morris's book, The Great Brunel. Um, this is more of a coffee table read because this has got loads of lovely illustrations and photographs in it, but it's actually quite light on the text. Um, so you can flick through this, you can enjoy the lovely images, and then you can read little bits of information about uh, about certain themes and what's going on. As you can see, it's very photographic. It's actually a, it's a lovely book just to browse through. So this is a this is a nice gift for somebody who wants to pop something out on the table and just pick it up and have a look every so often. Um, and that's nineteen ninety nine. If you want a bit more in on the text side of things, then I'm going to recommend to you the author John Christopher. And we sell four of his books in the shop. So we've got Brunel's Bridges, The Lost Works of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, Isambard Kingdom Brunel Through Time, and Brunel in Bristol, which is perhaps the most relevant one to the people living here in the city. Um, and as you can see, all of these books are the same length. They're 96 pages. Um, they've got a fair amount of text, but they've also got some really quite lovely images in them. Um, and they just pick up on these themes and stick to them. So you can read all four and not really find that it's repeating itself too much because it talks more about the projects than it does about Brunel the man. But it is dropping in information about him and his character as you go along. Um, so, yes, I would say Brunel in Bristol is probably the most relevant to the folks living here. Um, after that, I might go through for Brunel through time. Um, and then, of course, as somebody working on a bridge, I would prefer to read Brunel's Bridges. Um, all of these books are priced the same at $14.99. Um, we don't do them in a bundle deal, but all four are available on the website. Now, if you'd like to know a little bit more about the character of Brunel, then the book we've chosen to retail is, um, is Brunel from the Pocket Giant series by Eugene Byrne. 
Um, now, you may have seen uh, the paperback with the blue cover, um, Brunel by LTC Rolt. Now, this is actually um, an ab abbreviated version of Brunel's official biography by his son, Isambard Jr. Um, Rolt's book was published in the 1950s, so it, it is pretty heavy going. And you may find when you read that, that it's slightly biased in favour of Brunel. You know, there's a slight sweetening of his character, um, whereas I would say that this book by Eugene Byrne presents a slightly more balanced picture. Um, as you can see, it's all text, so there's no images in here, but it comes in short chapters um, and the text is quite accessible and easy to read. That's the one that we're selling in the shop at the moment. If you're really interested in the Rolt book, we do have stocks of that at the visitor centre. So just email and let us know and we can put it into the online shop for you if that's the one that you prefer to read. And this is £6.99. OK, finally, uh, we're going to finish off by taking a look at uh, the Bristol books. So I'm going to present to you here the Bristol colouring book. I love this. Um, it's got 40, I think, 45 illustrations of lovely things in Bristol for you to enjoy colouring. Um, so there's the lovely uh, Bristol packet there. Um, <laughs> the Avon Valley Railway. Uh, here's the Regent Cinema in Castle Street. Um, this is a dated to 1936, it says here. So, uh, you know, the images are historic and modern. Um, and there's a bit of information about each one telling you what it is and where it is, as well as a short introduction at the front. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're stuck at home and you find that colouring really does help to sort of just calm your mind, um, then this is a lovely way to sort of remind yourself a little bit of Bristol's history and of some of your favourite places to go. And maybe, you know, you could use it to make a wish list of where you'd like to see when things reopen again. So uh, Bristol colouring book there, lovely book, really nice quality paper as well, by the way, 9 99 so the final book I'd like to share with you today is Historic England's Book of Bristol. Um, and this is a collection of archive images dating all the way to the sort of mid to late 1800s to the sort of the 60s and 70s. So you'll see there's quite a lot of variety in the images here as to how recognisable various places are. Um, and it's lovely just to take a look back and see how much things have changed or how much they've stayed the same. Um, a lot of the streets that are named here, the buildings that, that, that are highlighted um, no longer exist. Um, a lot of them obviously being being lost in the in the bombing during World War II. Um, but I definitely recommend this book if you're interested in the history of Bristol or perhaps if you're a little older and you want to sort of reminisce and share your memories of the, sis the city with your children or grandchildren. I would say this is an absolutely lovely book to have a look through and it does raise some really interesting things. I actually learned quite a lot from reading this stuff that I didn't know about the city uh, before. Um, so yeah, this is a lovely, another lovely high quality book um, that's available from our online shop and it retails again at 14 99 so don't forget, um, every purchase that you make from the shop will help to support us uh, with our educational work at the Clifton Suspension Bridge Trust. And obviously, as we're locked down at the moment, we're really relying on, on our shop sales and online donations to keep us going and make sure that we can be there to provide our educational workshops when we get back to work again. So uh, thank you, everybody, for taking a look. Um, do go and have a look at our online shop. I'm going to put the link on the screen for you now. Um, and if there's nothing there that you fancy, please do consider making a donation. And thank you very much. Bye.